In this episode of John's Arcade, we're going back to the garage. Yes, we're gonna be starting part number one of the Rockola Jump Bug restoration. Then we're gonna come back to the basement and do some viewer mail. And one of them has us playing a game on this. Yeah, really. Anyway, guys, let's get on with the show. <laughs> Hey guys, we are in the basement and today we're gonna do, well we're gonna start a new John's Arcade Restore series. Yeah, that's right. This is gonna be part number one of a new restoration series. Actually, before we start though, check this out. What do you guys think of this? So if you guys remember, I had like some bare cement here, bare, bare concrete, naked concrete because when I put this carpeting down originally, I, I didn't order enough, and the carpeting just stopped here. And actually, originally, the, the arcade kind of came to here, and I, I ended up pushing it down a little bit. So I always had like bare cement here, and I had like a little runner, like a little runner carpet kind of over it, not covering all of it, but just kind of there. And actually, Etienne made a comment in the John's Arcade forum saying, John, I don't like your runner. I don't like that carpet at all. So I was at Home Depot yesterday and I'm like, maybe I can find something that's kind of similar to what I have and see if I can kind of fill this space in with some new carpet and here you go. Yeah, obviously the color is much lighter than the previous carpeting. And I, I thought when I was at the store, I was buying a good match. Turns out I really, it's not a good match at all. It's very light. Um, the original carpet I did buy at Home Depot, but I guess they don't have it anymore. And so this was the closest I could find but you know what, it actually looks, I think, kind of better than the cement. It's not awesome, it's not amazing, it's not perfect, but it's cozy, it's very cozy. And uh, well, I installed it today. Do you guys want to see me installing it, by the way? <laughs> I had to move all these games out. Anyway, all right, I'll tell you what, let, let's quickly, I'll show you guys me installing this carpeting and we'll come right back. Yeah, I know, I'm not a professional carpet installer. <laughs> I mean, basically I just kind of cut it and seamed it up the best uh, the best I could. And I used like some double-sided reinforced tape on the seam, but uh, hey, I think it's a lot better than, than the uh, cement. I do. And I wish it was the same color though, I know. Anyway, we're not here to talk about carpeting. <laughs> So today we're gonna start a new restoration series. Yeah, we are. And uh, this restore series is gonna be kind of down and dirty. That's kind of my prediction because we are gonna restore the Rock Hola Jump Bug, okay? And the first thing we wanna do is we need to get it working. And that's what I hope to accomplish in this video. Um, at least what I wanna find out for sure is how this thing works, because I'm not sure how the wiring is gonna work and we need to hook up a new power supply because I'm pretty certain certain that the power supply that's in this jump bug is, is bad. And we need to replace it, but we need to figure out how to wire it in because right now the wiring and the plugs are all going to this Rockola thing. And I'm not really sure how that works. So in this video, I wanna figure out what makes this game tick, okay? We're gonna pretty much, I think, take the power supply apart and just figure out where we're gonna tap in a new modern switching power supply. And yes, we're gonna be going to the garage. Yes, it's that time of the year again. It's actually very cold today, but I, I got the heater running right now, and I think we can warm it up enough to work out there. So anyway, enough of that. Let's, let's, let's just go to the garage and let's get to work on that Rockola jump bug. All right, guys, we're in the garage. Yeah, we're out here. <laughs> I gotta say, I'm pretty stoked to be in the garage because, you know, we haven't been out here since, 
Well, what was it, November, when we were working on the journey? And uh, so, yeah, I'm jazzed to be out here. And it's about, yeah, it's about 30 degrees today. It's not exactly warm, but the sun is shining. And I, I just kind of felt like I wanted to be out here. So I've had uh, this heater going for about the past hour. And it's about 60 degrees in here. It's, it's, it's usable. It, it's doable. It'll work. So, anyway, what I want to do in this video is I want to talk about the jump bug and I, I want to see what's going on with it because we picked this game up uh, it was in the winter right yeah it was pretty cold when I got it and I just kind of threw it in the garage in the winter and I haven't touched it I haven't done anything with it since I think I picked it up in December or something and uh, Ty actually helped me get this from a guy in New York um, this game was actually on Craigslist uh, and Ty sent me a link to it. It was like upstate New York, like really far away from me. And Ty helped me get this game here. I paid a guy uh, about 150 bucks to drive it here. And it's, it's a guy that, that goes up and down the East Coast dropping games off and moving games for people. So I paid him 150 bucks to bring the jump bug here. The game itself was like $75. So I've got about 225 bucks into this thing. And uh, Right now, it doesn't work. I did plug it in when we first got it, and the monitor just came on, and that was it. So I don't know what's up with this thing at all. And uh, so what we're going to do is I want to open it up, and we're going to start testing the voltages. I, we, we, we might clean the game up in this video, too. So right now, it's got this warp warp marquee on there, which is wrong. Uh, this game is all 100% jump bug. And I think what happened was this is the marquee that was originally on the game. I found this on the, in the bottom of the cabinet, like just broken, okay? I think someone punched it at some point in its life and the operator just took a warp warp marquee and threw it on there and that was it. But this game is 100% jump bug. It just has that warp warp marquee. And actually, uh, Leslie, uh, Dean from the UK, he did some kind of an operator raid or something. He ended up with a bunch of marquees, and he sent me a jump bug marquee. So, Dean, thank you very much. And actually, why don't we put it on the game real quick, just to kind of make it feel like it's a jump bug. This is not a warp warp, it's a jump bug. So, let's come up here, and I'm just going to take my screwdriver, and uh, let's just pop this off. And we'll also see what's going on up in here. I don't even remember if they had... Uh, marquee light was working when I got this but let's put the proper marquee in we need to christen this game so all right good there's no there's no mouse nest in here this is usually where the mice like to like build their nests and stuff so uh, I, I've opened these marquees up before and and you'll see just huge Massive uh, rat's nest up in there, and it's just disgusting. My my punch out was the worst, I think, in Domino Man 2. So there you go. We got the jump bug marquee. So Dean, thank you for sending me that. Uh, so this is now a jump bug officially. Um, so let's go ahead. I got to put these screws back on. Actually, these are security screws. I'm surprised I was able to get these off. I'm just using a standard screwdriver. All right, let's put the screws on. So, it is, uh, well, it's towards the end of March here, and it's still cold, man. There's still, like, a few feet of snow on the ground. Really bad, but uh, I really want it to be in the 60s and the 70s so we can be out here all the time. Because we got stuff to do, guys. We got we to gotta work on the quantum. And uh, we're going to be doing something over here. And by the way, I don't know if you guys noticed, but uh, there's some stuff going on in here. So... Really quick, we had the R-Type, and I had that Hogan's Alley that was in a Popeye cabinet. Well, those are gone. Uh, I sold them to my buddy Jay, and Jay really wanted that R-Type back. Because if you guys remember, I traded my, my, uh, my Multi-Williams in the Bubbles cabinet, uh, and my Star Wars, which was minty with an Amplophone and the uh, ESB kit. It had uh, Empire Strikes Back and Star Wars. I traded those two games to Jay for his 720, his Robotron, and his R-Type. And the R-Type's been in the garage since I got it. I never found a spot to put it in the basement, and Jay really wanted it back because he was gonna convert it to an R-Type 2 because he got the kit. And I said, Jay, get that stuff out of here. Let, let's, let's make a deal. So he, he purchased both those games and picked them up uh, a couple weeks ago. And then I ended up picking up this dedicated 
Nintendo Versus cabinet. Now, now this is the real dedicated Nintendo Versus cab. And we might fire this up today in this video, but I, I've always wanted one of these. And this is actually for a project that I'm not ready to talk about. But uh, these cabs are actually tough to find, believe it or not. Um, the dedicated ones, because the, the Hogan's Alley I had was a was a conversion. It was a Popeye cabinet that was converted to Hogan's Alley because Nintendo sold a kit. And then they also had these dedicated cabs. And this right here is a dedicated, the gray cabinet. This is the same exact cabinet profile as our type and, and the dedicated single monitor Play Choice 10. The dedicated versus cabinets are gray, like this one here. And then the R type and the Play Choice 10 are black, okay? And this one is missing the side art. It, it should have Nintendo versus side art, but this side is not missing the side art. So, not sure what's up with that. Not sure where the piece of side art went, but this thing actually works 100%. Maybe we'll play a quick Hogan's Alley game in a little bit, but I'm not really ready to do a video about this game just yet, but we'll, we might talk about it a little bit uh, in a few minutes here. But anyway, let, let's get back to Jump Bug. Uh, so we got the marquee on, looking good. So let's open the back of the game here and, and, and let's just see what's happening. And, because uh, I really don't know. Um, I, I'm hoping that we just have a power supply issue. That's my hope here. And, because uh, that would be great if we swap the power supply in this video and the game's working. Um, okay, so we have uh, a monitor here, and that's a 4600, uh, and we've got the game PCB, and then the power supply is on the bottom left here, and this is where we're going to focus right now. Now, I did print out the pinouts for this game, okay, and this is the type of thing that you guys want to do when you're, you're, you're testing voltages, and you're just unsure what's what, okay, because we have an edge connector right there. And by the way, it, it was totally disconnected when I got the game. And uh, I'm pretty sure I put it on the right way. I hope so. But uh, so the edge connector goes here and I, I went and printed out the pinout. Okay. And the pinout shows you which, which wire, which uh, on, on the edge connector is what. Okay. So pin one on the, on the, uh, see it says component side and CKT side. What? Component and solder. This is, should be solder side. What is CKT? What are they trying to say? Sucka? <laughs> I don't know. So it's component side and solder side. Okay. And on the solder side, pin one and two is ground. Pin three and four are five volts. And on the other side, pin 19 and 20 is 12 volts. And 21 and 22 is ground. And on the component side, it's the same exact way. Um, except they're calling them A, B, C, D. So A is ground, B is ground, C is 5 volts, D is 5 volts, and then on the other side, W and X is 12 volts, and Y and Z are ground. And there's also a 5 volts up in here at, at D and 4, um, component side and uh, solder side. So let's, let's kind of get in here and see if this all lines up and matches, because I think there's actually a couple different boards. One is a Sega. And I'm not sure, so this should be 22, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. Yep, 22. Okay. So our grounds are 1, 2, and 21 and 22. So it's these here. And then 5 volts is, is right here. And then 12 volts is down here. So if we were to come in with our meter, we could, we could try to see if we can grab it at the board here. Yeah. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to power the game on and we're going to take our meter and we're going to come in here and put ground on the top because one and two are ground and then three and four should be five volts, which are the two below. And so let me grab my multimeter and let me bring the extension cord over here. Oh, by the way, we got the wireless mic in the garage. This is like the first time. It's pretty nice because I'm walking all over the place getting stuff. So, all right, let's let's get the power cord. Okay, so I'm going to plug this in. All right. And let me just take a look here. So these are supposed to be ground. Let's look at the wires sure this makes sense here so these top ones are supposed to be ground okay and then the reds I guess are 5 volts 
And then down here, let's see, these two, the bottom four are ground, and then these reds, I guess, are going to be our uh, 12 volts. So why don't we, I'm d debating right now if I want to test it right here, not plugged in the board, or test it, there's a cap that's off right there, or have it test it on the board. And, and let's just go like this. All right. All right, so let's turn the game on. I just pulled the interlock. All right, so the game came on, marquee light came on, So let's see the monitor. We have any kind of picture here? We did before. Yeah, we do. We have a white screen. I think. Yeah, we do. Okay, so the monitor is working. Um, so let's take our multimeter and we're going to test the voltages on that edge connector. So I'm going to put this on DC volts. Okay. And let's see if we can find a spot so you guys can see this. And we got to be careful because the game's on, the monitor's on, we have high voltage in this area. So let's, let's see if we can just put this thing right here. All right. Let's see if you guys can see what's going on here. I'm going to come down a little bit. Okay. So let's zoom out. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to come in here carefully and I'm going to put my black on one of the top two, which is ground, and then my red right here, and we have no voltage, okay? Nothing. So I'm putting it right on the pad, um, on the edge connector. So the top two are ground. And, the, and then the two after that should be 5 volts, and I'm getting nothing, 0 0.005 DC. So right now, the power supply is outputting nothing, okay? So let's come down here and take a peek. All right, let's take a peek at this power supply. And we're going to have to try to make heads or tails of this, okay? So we've got this rock hole of thing here, and we've got some fuses. Oh, look at that. There's a fuse. There's a fuse holder missing. Great. Interesting. So we're missing a fuse right here. Completely. We've got fuse holders right here. There's four. And this one has nothing on it. Huh. Let's look down here. So we've got all kinds of nuts. <laughs> There's nuts down here, and so yeah, there was mice in this game at some point. Uh, where is that fuse holder? Hmm. Okay, so that fuse holder is F5, and it says 25 volts AC, 1.5 amp. So I wonder if we even need that for this game, because we only need the plus 5 and the plus 12. We don't use the minus 5 and the 25 in this game. So could that be missing for a reason? Um, interesting. So we need to figure out what to do here. So this, this connector right here, see this? This goes, this connector here is where we need to tap into. Um, this goes over here to this game and gives it the power, okay? And we got black orange and red wires and pink. Hmm. Okay. I'm just trying to figure out what's going to be the easiest way to put our switching power supply in here. So I could just figure out where these wires are going and tap them in, or we could take this thing apart and see what's in here, because I think there's a switching power supply inside this thing, and there might be easy connectors in there. So here's our AC in, 
And then these voltages here are what? This is going up to our marquee light. And then what's, oh, this is the speakers. Oh, I see, okay. So, oh no, this is the interlock switch. Okay, gotcha. All right, so these two are, this one is power to the marquee light and this is to the interlock switch. And then everything here is going to the logic board. Um, I susp and then for the marquee light, where's that voltage? Oh yeah, that's over here. So this is going to the logic board and probably to the coin door. So we could tap in right here. I just need to figure out how, where to do that. Uh, we're gonna have to cut these wires and then run them to our switching power supply adapter. Or we could try to open this up and figure out what the hell is going on in here, which I kind of want to do. So let me try to figure out how we get this into this thing. Because I want to see what's in here. It's our isolation transformer. Do I take this thing off? Okay, I think what I want to do is uh, I want to pull this off and I want to open this up and see what's in here because I think there's a switching power supply inside this box. I'm not positive that, but I just want to at least look inside of it to see if maybe there's an easier, cleaner way to hook up our switching power supply to this. And I just want, I just want to see what's in here. So there's four nuts that are holding this on. Get the bottom ones first. And by the way, I looked at the pinout. I, I, I printed the pinout from Crazy Kong, which is a website that has like pinouts for every single game. And they're usually good. Um, however, I did a little research and that pinout is wrong. So the pinout that we were looking at is actually wrong because it wasn't lining up with where the wires were on that edge connector. And I'm looking at it and I'm like, this doesn't make any sense. However, the 12 volts and the 5 volts are correct. It's the other wires that are wrong. But I, I needed to know what the other wires were so I could figure out which side was one, which, which is pin one. All right, so we've got, uh, got one more to come off here. Let me unplug all this stuff. We should check all these fuses too. I didn't do that. And I don't know if we're, since we're missing that 25 volt fuse, I don't even know if that matters, but we'll find out. All right, so let's get these screws out of here. These nuts, let's pull this bad boy out of here. And uh, we got a ground screw. Okay, so, yep, that's what I suspected. So um, here's, our, here's the original switching power supply. So, I could tap in right here. And uh, what does this do? Okay, so that's what we're gonna do. It's gonna be a lot cleaner and a lot obvious. So this right here is AC in, and let me see if you guys can see this. And then this right here. Uh, so we gotta figure out which is 12 volts and which is five, and, and these are ground, I guess. Is it labeled on here? All right, so this is AC in, and... All right, so we're gonna pull this thing off. I just need to figure out where this... All right, here it is, this is five, plus five is here. Uh, no, that doesn't make sense. I'm guessing that's five. All right, let me uh, let me get this ground screw off of here so we can get this thing out completely. So we got this little ground screw right here. Let me get my nut driver. So this is nothing more than a switching power supply that's in this big box. That's it. So we could our our power supply is bigger than this, though it won't fit in here. Um, I should check those fuses too. Where's my nut drivers? Let me get, get the nut drivers. All right, let's come in the front here. This 
that off. So here's our power supply, and unplug it. All right, let me get a table set up. We're going to go through this thing. Okay, so we got this on the table here. Uh, the one thing I'm curious about are the fuses. Since we got this out, why don't we go ahead and just test all these. And we're missing this fuse right here which says is 25 volts AC, one and a half amps. I don't know what that's feeding. Interesting. Something tells me we don't need this voltage. This is probably a power supply they use on multiple things. And something tells me that we don't need that. All right, so let's look at this fuse here. So I'm going to take my, my meter. We, we might not be getting any AC voltage to this thing. So let's put it on uh, continuity. <laughs> uh, so F1, we just, it's hosed, man. Oh, don't tell me this whole thing. This whole thing was the fuse, wasn't it? This fuse is actually part of this cap, isn't it? Son of a bitch. <laughs> well, let's see if it was even good. Yeah, it is. <laughs> All right, maybe I could put it back together. Nah, that'd be risky. So it says this is a bus GMQ 3-2-10. All right, let's look at these ones. Is this thing whole thing the fuse? I'm curious. I think this whole thing right here is the fuse that you buy. I'll have to go on, online and see if this you can buy this thing. Bus GMQ 3-2-10 slash 10. If you guys know what the hell this is, let me know. Alright, let's test this one. It's good. This is our 5 volt fuse. That's not good. No, it is. Alright, that one's fine. And then this one is minus 5. That's good. So this stupid thing, I don't think I could put this back together. So what does F1 even do? It probably kills the whole game, right? F1 is the 110, 100 volts, 100 to 123 amp fuse, F1. So this is going to kill the whole game if it's not, if this fuse is blown. Shit. Let me go see uh, if you can actually buy these. Hang on. Okay, I went online, and yeah, this, this is the fuse. This whole thing is the damn fuse. <laughs> and you could buy this entire unit, okay? Don't do what John did and think that this was the fuse that you, you pulled out of here. No, this entire thing is a fuse, and these are readily available online. So I'll order one of these, and we're kind of dead in the water right now because this, this fuse here is for the 110 volts. If this, you know, because we broke it, um, this is going to kill the whole game, but why don't we at least see if we can figure out, though, what we're going to have to do, because, and also, I want to order a fuse holder uh, for that 25-volt fuse. I kind of feel like we should put that in there. Um, I mean, it's missing. It, it probably wasn't. This is a 25-volt AC, 1.5-amp F5. So I'm going to see if I can find these fuse holders online 
and uh, I'll order one for there, and then we'll we'll replace that. I don't think we're going to need it though because I don't know what. Maybe the coin door needs 25 volts. I have to look at the manual and the schematics to figure out where that's going. Um, because there is some kind of like uh, coin coin uh, door board or whatever right here. I don't know what the heck this is. Look at this thing. So I don't know if that is using 25 volts. It could be. Uh, but I don't know where else it would send 25 volts. It's, I mean, it's not going to the logic board because, uh, well, we know that, uh, and that's 25 volts AC. So could it be that it's going to the power supply? I don't think so. This is AC, no. So the power supply is not, not being fed um, the 25 volts. It's being full, fed 110. That fuse is good. So, all right, so this is our AC in. So we can take the, these wires and run them to our new power supply. And then this right here, we need to figure out what, what is 5 volts. And it looks like it's going to be this pin right here. This is 5 volts. And I'm guessing this is ground. And then this red and white and this gray is our 12 volts over here. Because I could see plus 5 is screened on the board down here. So I wonder if we can get this thing out. Yeah, we can. So we need a nut driver. So what we're going to end up doing in this video then is just kind of getting ready to wire up our switching power supply adapter. And what I'll do is I'll just run wires out of this to it. All right. So this thing should just fall out. Okay, so... If you look on this board, I kind of want to take this whole thing apart so we can see what's going on. But I could see that it says plus five right there. So that tells me that these two pins I think are plus five. And, and then it looks like this area right here might be ground. And then this is 12 volts. <sighs> And this is AC, okay. So this is FG. I wonder if I took off this header, if we could see what's going on. Let's open this thing up. Let me get some smaller bits here. Actually, this is, I can go online. I should go online and Google this. STK-MC014A. Maybe we could find a pinout for this thing. Hang on. Okay, I have, I, I got this power supply out and I'm just trying to figure out which pins are what on here. Um, I can see right here that it says plus five, okay? So I think it's pretty safe to assume that these two pins are five volts. If you look on the back, See that they're bridged there. So these two are five. I'm guessing that these are ground, okay? And then after that, uh, the connector is connecting to uh, the fourth and the fifth from this side. One, two, three, four. So these two, I think, are 12 volts in ground right here. Um, and I'm trying to, to deduce this, actually. And I just discovered something. That 5 amp fuse on the 5 volts is actually bad, okay? Because if you look here, if this is 5 volts, okay, if I put my multimeter in here on continuity, okay, and if I follow it, it goes to the 5 volt fuse, which is right here, which is this one, okay? So it's, that wire is going to this 5 volt fuse, and then it's leaving and going to this Molex over here. However, it's not making it to the Molex because it, it should be going right here to this pin because that fuse is bad. 
and I pulled it out and I thought I tested it, which is weird. And this fuse is not good, okay? So, it's entirely possible that this thing's good. I doubt it though. So we need to replace this fuse. It's a five amp, looks like a slow blow fuse. The one that was in here is, let's see, bus, uh, it says something five, AJ, AGC five, 250 volt. So I don't have this fuse. I'm gonna have to order it, okay? And I mean, we could bypass all of this and just hook it up over there, but I kind of don't want to. I kind of want to just basically replicate what they did. And let's see then if, if, if this is 12 volts. So if I come in here with my meter, because I think that's 12 volt wire right there. And the 12 volt fuse is this one right here. So it should come to here. Okay, yep, yeah, that's 12 volts. Okay. And then this ground wire this black is ground. I wonder if these are, we can figure out where those are going. So this is a ground. That black wire is going over here. Ah, that's minus five. Okay. That black wire, this right here is minus five. It's going to the minus five fuse. All right, so we got this all figured out. So this is five volts, ground. This is uh, minus, uh, this is 12 volts, and this is minus five. Gotcha, all right. So we just figured it out. We don't need minus five though. So we're just gonna, t we're gonna cut this wire here and go to five volts, cut this wire, go to our ground on the power supply, cut this wire, and that's going to go to our 12, and this one we're just going to just leave dangling, uh, just remove it completely, because we don't need minus 5 for this game. And then let's double check. So this is ground right here, and on this Molex connector, I think all of these are ground up here. Actually, the one's on the bottom. So... So we got ground going here, here. Okay, so that's our ground. Let's go look at that plug to see if that makes sense. So it's the, uh, not the round one. It's the one that looks like a, like a uh, railway cave train entrance in the corner. Let's see if that makes sense over here. So what I'm doing is I just, I just wanna make sure that uh, my logic here is 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 uh, working. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yep. So that one is black wires there in the corner. So those two right there are ground. Gotcha. All right. So we got this all figured out. Uh, so what I want to do is I want to write this down. We're not going to actually hook this up today because I need to replace this fuse. But we figured it out. Okay. I've figured out where everything's going to go. But I want to document this so I don't forget. And again, so these two are ground, right? Yeah, okay. All right, let me go get a piece of paper and a pencil and we're gonna write this down because I wanna document this before the next video. Okay, so on our power supply, we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay. And these two are five volts plus five. The next three are ground, okay? And then, let's see, this one is feel ground, that one is key, okay? And then, so you see what we did here? We're kind of figuring out by deduction what is what. And uh, so this one, so it goes ground, are there those three, five volts, one, two, three, and then this is minus five, which is four, 
minus 5, and this is 12. Okay, so what we're going to do in the next video then is I'm going to cut these wires and we're going to hook these up to our, and we're going to extend them out of this box and we're going to plug them into our power supply, our new power supply. But we can't do anything because I, I, I did this. <laughs> so I'm going to order one of these. Uh, I might order a fuse holder too for right there. But I feel like I have a pretty good handle on this. Uh, we don't know if the PCB works at all, but uh, so yeah, we're gonna stop here, okay? So what we did today is we kind of took inventory of the jump bug. We've, we've pretty much diagnosed the issue. Um, and so we just need to uh, make our hook up to the new power supply and see what happens. And I'm trying to get all this crap that's on the bottom of the cabinet. I lost one of the nuts here. There's, all right. So yeah, we're gonna stop here. Um, you know what, before we go though, you guys wanna play a quick game of uh, Hogan's Alley before we go back to the basement? Yeah, I know, nothing happened, right? We, we didn't get it working. <laughs> but we diagnosed, uh, I, I, I mean, I'm, we've, I pretty much have a, a pretty good game plan now as to how to hook this thing up. So I'm not worried about it at all. So. I'm gonna order that fuse, and uh, I actually I might need some wire and some uh, some shrink tube too because we're gonna, and I also need some spade connectors. So we want to do a, a nice, good, clean hookup when we hook that up. So I'll be be prepared for the next video when we're working on that. So all right, why don't we why don't we just plug in the uh, Hogan's Alley? And by the way, it's starting to get pretty cold out here. The temperature is dropping. All right, so let's. Uh, let me pull this out here. And on the back, what do we have? Do we have a key? We have a key. All right, let me get the key here. That one. Let's try this one. There we go. And these cabinets are actually pretty cheaply made. They use like wafer board. Like look at that. That's just horrible. And they use a lot of wafer board on the inside. But let's get the power cord. And let's plug this guy in. And play us some, uh, some Hogan's Alley. All right, it's plugged in. Nothing's happening. There's a switch down here. There we go. Uh-oh. That's the gun alarm. Oh, I had the gun disconnected. So, <laughs> on these games, they have a gun alarm. So if someone tries to steal the gun, it makes that horrible sound. And when I, I in order to get this into my vehicle, I had to disconnect uh, the control panel. Uh, so let's plug everything back in. All right, so we got this guy here. It's a real mess, isn't it? All right, so let's plug in this one. God. All right, so where does this go? This plugs in to the gun, but where? So the gun harness comes through here. Here it is, okay. So here's the gun hookup. Yeah, that hideous sound, like I said, is an alarm. Because if someone tries walking away at the gun, that, that alarm goes off. And because since the gun is disconnected right now, it thinks that someone tried stealing it. Okay, so 
that should be it. All right, let's try it again. Let's turn it on. Hopefully we don't hear the gun alarm. There we go. So Hogan's Alley is uh, actually a pretty cool game. Um, let me turn the lights off here. This was a, a, a great classic NES game that I actually played a lot of. All right, let's play some Hogan's Alley here. Coin up. All right, there we go. Let's play a one-player game. And yes, the gun works, which which is actually, uh, or does it? Crap, didn't really register, did it? I think the gun's a little flaky. I only played this once when I, uh... Hmm. Not good. Let me double check my connections here. Let's try it again. There we go. So we gotta shoot the bad guys, not the good people. Mm. Hmm. Gun's a little off. Well, that was bad. Let's try that again. I always wanted a gun game in the basement. Why is it not coining up? There we go. Hmm. Just checking out the gun here. It seems really flaky. When I play this, uh, I actually just tested it like one second when I bought it. It seems to be working okay. Okay. I think the, the, the quicker you shoot the bad guys, the more points you get. Alright, so now we're round six. A little more variety here. Now we're in the streets. Mm. I wonder though, a game like this in the basement, would I get bored of this really quick? Not doing very well. No. Okay, gun shop, it says. Isn't the music badass in this, by the way? Uh. <laughs> uh, anyway, you guys get the idea. I, I, clearly something's not right with the gun, though. It's not registering every time. Let's see. Yeah, it's not working. B, B, B. So anyway, guys, yeah, that's it. You know what? Uh, so, you know, that's going to do it for the this video, really, in the garage here. I mean, we pretty much figured out what the game plan is with that, with that, uh, with the, uh, jump bug because I really didn't have a game plan. I didn't know what we were going to find when we opened that thing up and 
I, I think I have a pretty good way of that we're going to tap into that uh, to hook up the switching power supply. So we'll do that in the next jump bug video, but th consider this kind of part one, more of an exploratory video, just trying to figure out what's going on with this game. And I, I don't even know if the, if the PCB is working, so we'll find out uh, once we get a good power supply on this thing. Um, but I'll order those fuses and we'll come back out here in the next week or so and see if we can get this game working. But uh, all right, guys, that's going to do it for the garage portion of this video. Why don't we go back into and down and, yeah, we're going to go back down to the basement. All right, guys, let's go. All right, guys, there you have it. That was, well, I guess part number one of the jump bug restoration. Yeah, not a whole lot happened in this video in regards to the game, but we did figure out really how that whole power supply is setup works and, and now I kind of know exactly how to hook up a switching power supply. I'm going to go ahead and order that fuse thing that I broke like an idiot. <laughs> I'll order one of those. They're like five bucks. Um, I need to get that other fuse too, that five amp that is used in the uh, for the five volts and then I'll probably get some Molex connectors as well because I, I want to have a nice clean connection um, basically where I'm going to add new wires to the old wires and then run that to our switching power supply. So anyway, I want to go ahead and do some viewer mail. And by the way, if you guys want to participate in this segment, you need to email them to me at blkdog, the number seven, at gmail.com. That's blkdog7 at gmail.com. In the subject line, please put viewer mail. Okay, next one is from Tom. Uh, hey, John, Tom from West Michigan here, long time viewer, first time writer. I would like to talk about a subject that does, that does not get a lot of love touch screens. I noticed you have a mega touch CRT force. Very nice. We have had touch screens in our house for many years. Anything from the mega touch max to the mega touch RX LCD. If you ever get a chance, you really need to pick up one of the LCD touch screens. Once you start using one of these, you will never go back to the CRT touch screen displays. The picture and sound quality on these are absolutely fantastic. Also, I recently sold my mega touch RX and purchased a JVL Vortex for over half the price. I actually like the JVL as much or better than the Mega Touch. The games are just as good, and I believe that the graphics are even better. They do not use a hard drive, so it doesn't take nearly as long to boot up. Plus, the upgrades are a lot less than the Mega Touch upgrades. Keep up the good work. My boys, 7 and 10, love the John's Arcade on the road segments. We are going to have to start planning our vacations around some of the locations you have visited. Screw visiting. I want to live in Denver. We really enjoyed the New York City Nintendo Lego store visits. It will be a while before we can get to those places, so it was nice that you included a video of your visit. It was something fresh and different. Nothing wrong with doing that once in a while, in my honest opinion. Take care. Tom, P.S. Brown paint sucks. So, Tom, uh, you want to talk about the Mega Touch. You didn't really ask a question, but sure, we could talk about the Mega Touch because I actually love the Mega Touch. And I have right here, this is it. I have a Force, okay? And this is, uh, I think the last CRT model they made, okay? And I actually think it's a very good unit. I think it's I think it's good looking, okay? It has, yes, it has a, a, a CRT, not an LCD display, because the ones after this, like uh, the Radeons and all that, they use LCD screens and they are much thinner. So this one is not that small, okay? But as far as the CRTs go, it is a smaller one. And I happen to love this device. I, I have looked at the LCD ones and I've talked myself out of those several times because I just don't personally think the upgrade is worth it because I think the CRT actually looks really good. Now, maybe I'm wrong, but I I've played the LCD ones like at bars and stuff, and I, I think that the CRT does a pretty good job on this model. Um, I don't know. I, I think it's not bad. This is the 2010 and a half. So I this is a Force Radeon with a 2010 and a half uh, in here. And... Some of the LCD ones have a joystick too, so you can play like games that use joysticks. I, I, you know, I know there are some games though on the later models that are pretty cool. Some of them do use the joystick. I think most of the joystick games though aren't very good. Um, and by the way, guys, if you're not aware, there's no more Mega Touch. They killed it um, because Mega Touch they sold Mega Touch to uh, 
AMI, the jukebox company, I think that's what it was, and they killed Mega Touch in the last like year or two. So there's gonna be no more Mega Touches. So I, I don't know what's gonna happen with the pricing on these things. Um, the LCDs still seem to be pretty expensive. Now the JVL, like you mentioned, I don't think I've ever really played the JVL. I think I've seen those. I always kind of thought those were kind of like uh, second class citizens compared to the Mega Touch, because Mega Touch is kind of the standard, so. But uh, what, I don't know, what else can we say about this that, uh, I know you want to talk about this. You want to look inside real quick? <laughs> we can do that if anyone wants to see how this game looks inside. Let me unplug this. So in here, it's basically like a PC, okay? So that's the inside of a Mega Touch. And we have this little computer here. It's running Linux, okay? And there's a hard drive right here. And he said that the JVLs don't have a hard drive. Well, this one does. Um, there is a security key right here. You see that, okay? So basically, you have to have the hard drive with the, 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 with the software you want and then the matching security key over here. Otherwise, the system will not boot. So this right here is a Force 2010 and a half security key and then the Force 2010 and a half hard drive. But really, this is just a PC. It's a PC running a flavor of Linux. We have our CRT monitor up here, and that's about it, really. And I think they're just fantastic system systems. And I personally really like the one that I have. Um, I don't know if I would go with an LCD. I have no problem with this one. I actually think it does a really good job, and it gets tons of play down here. And it's been very reliable. Maybe I could show you guys like the boot sequence too, because uh, when it boots, you can kind of see the Linux stuff going on. So it's booting right now. Force Intelligent Entertainment. It says press tab to show post screen, delete to enter setup. So again, it's just a PC like, like booting right now. And then I think we see, yeah, here it's a real tech, uh, PCI device listing. So it's literally just a computer. Lilo loading Linux version 28 uh, underscore 21 BIOS data check. Um, so yeah, but you know, these systems now are getting really cheap, the CRT ones. Personally, if you're gonna get a CRT Mega Touch, I wouldn't get one any older than the, the Force. Cause they've got like those ruby and emeralds and, and those things are usually very cheap, but they're really old. And I don't think the cabinets are very attractive and they're kind of really big. This one, they managed to kind of get it to make the uh, CRT one kind of small. And I think it's actually pretty attractive. I like it, you know, I really do. I, I like having the bar table. My wife plays it a lot. She, she loves it, so it's a big hit here. And, and by the way, I, I'm, I'm happy to hear that you liked the Nintendo video. I'm glad your kids did too. We went to the Nintendo World, and we also went to the Lego store. I know some of you guys didn't like that because it was kind of non-arcade related, but you know what, I, I'm not gonna be, I, I don't want to be afraid to do kind of fun videos. It's Nintendo for God's sake. I don't think it was quite a stretch. And I actually really enjoyed making that video. I'm putting the key back in the game, by the way. Hang on. So thank you. Thanks, Tom. All right, let's 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 read the next email here. Uh, this one is from Andrew. And it says, hey, John, I, I've been a big fan of your videos since the Gyrus Restore. And I watch your videos religiously. If it wasn't for you, I wouldn't have given soldering another try. I own the same soldering iron as yours, thanks to your vids, and I've gotten good to somewhat great success. That's awesome. Anyway, I was wondering if you checked out the 3D Classics Outrun port on the 3DS since it just came out. How does the port compare since you own the actual machine? Also, just a suggestion, as one of your on the road videos made me sick, <laughs> not in a disparaging way, you should consider getting a steady cam adapter so you can have smoother video so the video isn't so vertigo inducing, Andrew. All right, Andrew, so all right, let's, let's address the first thing here because you're actually not the only person that asked me about this. Um, so on the 3DS, uh, they released uh, this thing they're calling, they, they have this line of games they're calling 3D Classics. And it's basically a slightly updated version of classic games with 3D graphics, okay? I know they did it with, uh, I think Xevious they did it, I think the NES port. They did it with Kid Icarus, I have that one. And then they did it with OutRun. Now I don't know if the OutRun they did is an arcade port or is that an NES port, but since you're 
since you're not the only one that asked me this, I decided to, to purchase the game and download it. Now, I haven't actually played it yet, so I thought we'd kind of do it together. And let's see how this compares to the arcade. Um, I'm not really sure if it's like an arcade port or is an NES port. I'm not really sure. So it's right here. I just bought it. Let me unwrap it. And it was like $5.99. All right, that's kind of cool. So right away, they've got the arcade machine. That's cool. So it says 3D Outrun. All right, so let's go ahead and start it. Okay, let's see if this is an arcade version or if this is a uh, NES port. Let me turn this light off. Powered by Sega. M2. Initializing save data. Please do not turn off the power. Okay, so we got the kind of cartoony graphics. So let's see what's in settings. Difficulty, okay. Game version, old and new. All right, so now we're in, in old. Let's, let's do new. So there's a difficulty mode, which is interesting, and a speed limit. Speedometer, okay. Let's see, what else is there? Controls, screen size. All right, let's, let's, get, let's get out of here. Okay, let's just start a game. Oh, that looks like the arcade version to me. All right, so we're going to press the X button to coin up. And I think that I have... Yeah, we're playing right now the old version, but it's in 3D. Is this the old version? I don't know. But it's in 3D. So, okay, this is interesting. We can select... Wow, you can select where you want to start. That's kind of weak. So you can see with the, with the right trigger here... That's the map, and you could you could choose a different starting area. That's weak. I right. let's start in one. Okay, so it looks like I need to press Y to accelerate. So I can notice right away the car looks a little different, like the little logo on the back. I mean, it feels the same, but it feels different at the same time. Uh, you know, it would be great if this game had online leaderboards. I'm sure it doesn't. Music's great, though. Let me turn the 3D on. 3D looks cool. So I think this is the new version. We should try the old one, too. So I'm going to go ahead and pause it. Oops. Let's come back. Let's pause it. And, oh, you could save your game. That's interesting. So I saved my game right there. All right, so let's, let's go back to settings. Let's do the old version. The game must be reset to change game settings. Yes. Okay. So how is this the old version? old version it says I don't know this is weird <laughs> it's not an arcade I mean it, it, it what what makes this the old version I don't get it look how big the logo is on the car by the way that's not the right logo it's on the back of the car right here so they messed around with the sprites, and obviously they had to make it 16 by 9, and the graphics are updated, so it's, it's not pixelated at this resolution here. I don't know, the, the level seems different. I feel like there should be cars on the road. Oh, I'm in low. There we go. All right, so you ship with the right bumper. Eh, whatever. Yeah, it's okay. It seems kind of like it, but not. <laughs> I don't understand this whole low old thing. Uh, old game. It's on game version old. 
What does that mean? It looks exactly the same. Yeah, I don't know, for six bucks, I'll play with it some more and, and maybe give you guys a more intelligent uh, opinion about it. But uh, my initial impression uh, was, well, it, it kind of looks like it, it sounds like it, it, it felt like it, but I was noticing things that were different. Um, I don't think that that first level was exactly the same. I don't know, it, it seemed like it was kind of barren, and I don't feel like the arcade version is as barren. But here's the arcade one, you guys can kind of compare. But look at the logo of the car on the back of the car. See the horse? That looks completely different than the logo that was on the DS one. So I don't know what's up with that. But uh, I, I've done an OutRun review. We're not going to do one right now. But uh, yeah, I don't know. That 3DS version was okay. For six bucks, I guess it's not bad. I'll play some more. It doesn't look like there's any kind of online leaderboards or anything, though, which is kind of weak. So... And then Andrew, you also said uh, something about a steady cam. Yeah, you know, when I do the on the road videos, when I'm walking around, it's hard. You know, my camera actually has a built in optical uh, a stabilizer. Okay, like, you know, it, it does have a built in stabilizer. But, uh, you know, I'm not going to get an apparatus. I, I just, you know what, I can't do that because when I, when I do the on the road videos, a lot of times it's kind of. It's kind of on the down low, you know, and I don't want to attract too much attention when I'm doing them. And I really need to be portable, and I don't want to have one of those big apparatuses. I remember at PAX East one year, I saw a Gamester, and he had one of those big Steadicam things. And, and I'm like, wow, man, you're hardcore, dude. I, I could never walk around with one of those. And, I, and people always want me to get like a, a, a GoPro on my head. I'm not doing that either. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. I just want to walk around like this. So, all right, so Steve, I'm sorry, I'll, I'll work harder about being a little more stable. You know, I've been bringing my tripod, though, on these on-the-road videos. I, I've done it twice now. I did it at uh, 1UP. I brought the tripod in there, and I brought the tripod into uh, Pinball Wizard. So that's going to be my MO, I think, to, to keep the, uh, the video more steady and more smooth for you. Because I, I know when I'm walking around like this that, you know, you, you kind of get that bounce, and I understand. So... We're going to try to bring that rolling tripod more often on the on-the-road videos. All right, so Steve uh, says, he's from uh, Hiawatha, Iowa. Hi, John. I love the videos, the channel, and the site. I've been watching for over a year and have watched everything at least once. While my favorites are the restoration vids, Journey was awesome. You make everything fun and interesting. I was big into Pac-Man, Dig Dug, Donkey Kong in the early 80s, got away from the arcade stuff for a while, and then saw the movie King of Kong. It piqued my interest, and I got back into everything with MAME. After watching enough of your vids and patiently scouring Craigslist for a year, I finally found an upright Pac-Man. It's in rough shape and has video issues, but for $100, I figured I couldn't pass it up. The bezel and the control panel are actually in good shape. It has a Pac-Man plus marquee, so I was pleasantly surprised to find it actually had the original Pac-Man ROMs and CPU and not the modified chips and CPU used in Pac-Man Plus. My original plan was to try to restore this as a dedicated Pac-Man and get it working and then add the non-destructive 60-in-1 kit so I'll have more variety at parties. Uh, the cabinet is definitely going to need some bondo and sanding and painting. The front art by the kick plate is in really bad shape, but the side art actually is okay. There is some missing paint, flaking and scratches and some writing, but I hate the idea of sanding it and painting over it and using decals. I know your Pac-Man cabaret used the brown vinyl, so you didn't have to really de Deal with this issue. So here's my question. Have you tried to touch up this kind of side art? I really want to repaint all the yellow to make it look nice, but I have to think about the effort to try to touch up the artwork would be really high. I included a few pics. I'm not sure what kind of hardware slash monitor issues I'm going to face. So if I'm going to have to completely sand and repaint, I may just turn it into a multi-cade and use the cheaper marquee and artwork and just sell off the PCB monitor. Thanks again for sharing all your work with the community. I can't say I'm still uh, not intimidated by soldering and monitor fixes, but you have shown me it is doable. Steve in, in Iowa. So Steve included some photos of his Pac-Man. And, uh, you know, Steve, this Pac-Man looks pretty solid, man. Okay, so that, that is his Pac-Man, okay? And it has the Pac-Man Plus marquee, which, you know, the operators did that stuff in the 80s. That, you know, Pac-Man would, stop, stop, uh, would, would slow down earning money. They'd put Pac-Man Plus in there. 
And maybe they had the Pac-Man Plus board in there and it died and they put the original Pac-Man one back in. Who knows? But your cabinet looks pretty okay. It's, it's a plywood cabinet, so it's going to be easy to work on. Um, the front here is just hosed. The side, yeah, not too bad. The yellow down here is okay. Um, I know guys that have masked all of this artwork off and then painted the yellow, okay? Now, that can get tricky, though, because, you know, you, you got to find a yellow that's dead nuts on, otherwise you're going to see your work, okay? Um, the sides here are okay. It just looks like in here and here you've got a bunch of banged up stuff. I can't really tell if that's water damage or not. The bottom does look a little ratty, okay? So, what are your options? I, I think the best way to go about this is to sand it all off and go to thisoldgame.com and buy the Pac-Man stencils. Now, I've never personally stenciled a cabinet, but I'm not afraid to do it. And I think it's only like three colors, right? It's black, b black and blue? Is it two colors? Yeah, it's three. Black, blue, and, uh, black, blue, and yellow. So it's a three color stencil job. And basically you put the one stencil down and you apply the black and then you apply the blue and then you apply the red. You do basically three coats. Some guys will spray it onto the stencil. Some guys will roll it, uh, either one. Um, spraying is probably more like how they did it. They probably sprayed that because you'll see the overspray on these. Um, but you know, I don't think this project will be too tough. I, I would sand it off, paint the yellow, put the stencils on, Hit, hit it with some blue and red and black spray paint, and uh, I think it could look pretty good. Um, I was looking at your pictures here, so the the uh, control panel doesn't look too bad. <coughs> you can mask this off and paint the black, or yank off the overlay. I'm not sure how bad it is or not, uh, but mine had the same issue with the black here. I masked mine off and painted it. Um, the bezel looks pretty good. Looks like you got some gl glitches here on the screen. Not really sure what's going on, what you're trying to show me there. But I'll tell you this, I'll give you some, some hints about Pac-Man. Um, you, you need to check your voltages. Actually, before you do anything, there is going to be a filter board. If this machine is still stock, uh, you got the game PCB, you got the edge connector, right? And in between, they put this filter board, okay? And so, you know, like here's the PCB, and here's the edge connector coming down on it, okay? And then in between there, they put this filter board, right? Okay? You don't need this thing. This is like some FCC uh, BS. And uh, so they put these filter boards on here to basically cut down the, the radio waves or whatever the game they thought it was emitting. And they were worried that the, the arcade games were gonna like interfere with television and radio and stuff. So they would put these filter boards on here to filter out certain frequencies, okay? But these filter boards, go bad. The parts on here, I don't know if there's diodes or resistors or whatever's on here, these parts go bad and this can cause all kinds of trouble and, and it's a variable that you just don't need. You don't need this part in your game. So pull this th the filter board off if it's on there. Pull it off, throw it in the garbage, take your edge connector and connect it directly to the PCB, okay? You don't need the filter board, okay? And a lot of Pac-Mans can be fixed just by that, okay? And then also look at your edge connector. You know, it could be flaky. I did that in my video. And also check your voltages. The power supply is actually in, built into the PCB uh, on that game. So I don't know, man. I, I don't think you should multi cade this. If, I don't know. It, it, this looks like a really good project, dude. I mean, you, you're... You paid a hundred bucks for that. That looks like a great game for a hundred bucks. That's the kind of game that I would be all over. That's the kind of project that I like, okay? For a hundred bucks, a, a nice plywood cabinet that's all complete. I really think that you should stencil it. That's what I would do. I'd get the game working, and then you can decide if you want to put some kind of multi-board in there with a JAMA adapter. Um, but I think you, could, you should try to make that look like an original pack. That, that's my opinion. I mean, it's your game. You, you do what you, you feel that you, you want to do. But uh, the monitor is clearly working. You know, maybe you just need a cap kit and an adjustment to make it look really sharp. But uh, nice score for 100 bucks, though. See, guys, you can get $100 games on Craigslist. Okay? It's a real thing. You just got to have patience. It said it took, it said it took them a year. Okay? And if you spread out your search, you know, you can, you, can get, you can make it happen faster. You know, if you just look in one area, it'll take you a longer time. But if you're willing to drive and you spread out your search to a couple of states, you know, I used to always say 100, 100 miles was my limit. And in New England, that's like five states, you know. So anyway. All right, guys. Well, that's going to do it for this video. I, I hope you guys liked it. Uh, 
I am very, very happy that we're in the garage. I have to tell you though, I was freezing my butt off towards the end of that video and I ran out of propane. So uh, I, I was able to bring the temperature up to 60, but as I was making the video, it kept going down and down and down. To, it, I got to the point there, Dan, where I had to get inside. I was running out of time for one and it was, it was just too cold. So, but uh, I, I'm very stoked to be uh, in the garage working. Now, what's going on here is we're gonna have three projects going on. That's that's kind of my plan. We're going to be doing a jump bug restore. Now, now the jump bug restore, I, I really do plan on it, on it being really down and dirty, okay? I, I'm not sure yet how we're going to do the sides. I have the side art for it, okay? I was thinking about finding some thin laminate and, and putting that on the sides and then putting the side art over that and then spray painting the blue. Uh, maybe we'll cap that monitor. I've actually never capped a 4600. I've actually avoided that monitor big time. Um, but I'm actually really excited to play Jump Bug because I think the game's kind of weird and cool. So uh, hopefully in the next video we get it working. I'm going to order those parts. So we're going to be doing the Jump Bug restore, which I don't think is going to take us very long. I, I don't. I, I think we'll have that done in, in six weeks or something. But the weather's not quite there, okay? Today was very cold, actually. It was too cold to go out, but I did. Um, I, I couldn't work in that garage very long uh, with this kind of weather. So we're going to have to wait till it gets in the 60s at least. But once it does, we're going to do the jump bug, knock that out, and then I want to do the quantum at the same time, I think. So we might have two restores going. And then, guys, I have a game coming. It's on the way, and it's a very special game. And I'm not going to tell you what it is. <laughs> and Adam is going to go with me to pick it up, I think. And, I, and he, he's not. I, 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 I haven't even told him. I said, Adam, I want you to come with me to pick up this game. Um, and I'm not going to tell you what it is. So, so I'm not telling you guys. But that's, that's going to be here in like two weeks. So we're going to have three restores going. And then actually a fourth because I need to do something with that Hogan's Alley that I can't talk about yet. But, but uh, So we're going to have four things going on in the garage. So we're going get, to be getting all kinds of garage time here starting soon so get ready guys and also during the week we'll come down here play some games and all that stuff and of course we're gonna do on the road videos um i actually had a guy in quebec want, want wanting me to come up to some like arcade museum and so i don't know if, if that will happen i don't know um and then in may of course we have the fun spot tournament which is may 29th and 30th um it's gonna be a john's arcade uh, impossible outsiders tournament all three of those communities and uh, I think we're gonna have a really good turnout so that's May 29th and 30th I have information at arcade outsiders a, like that much but really if you go to the John's arcade forum uh, at John's arcade.com slash forum there is a thread there so if you have any questions or anything go in that thread and post um, and I, I'm in the forums all the time so I can help you guys out I really haven't made an official page I don't know. I, I need to make some kind of official website or something. Uh, but it's all coming together. We got sponsors. We got prizes. It's going to be awesome. Or we're, It's going to be an arcade event, so the scores are going to count. That's May 29th and 30th. And, of course, I have two podcasts, Video Game Outsiders at VideoGameOutsiders.com and Arcade Outsiders at ArcadeOutsiders.com. Um, so if you guys want to listen to the podcast, go on iTunes or Stitcher and do a search for Video Game Outsiders or Arcade Outsiders. And, of course, I do uh, both of those podcasts live on AllGames.com starting at Tuesday, uh, start, uh, starting at 9 p.m. Eastern on Tuesdays. So if you want to listen live, go to AllGames.com. Um, Tuesdays at 9 p.m. Eastern or listen anytime on uh, iTunes and Stitcher so all right guys I, I think that's it for this video it's late it's 9 30 where where did this day go you know I've been I actually have played Battlefield Hardline a little too long and actually I spent a lot of time on that carpeting that carpeting took me forever it was actually a real pain in the butt to be honest I, I did an okay job what do you think so anyway all right guys that's it for this video I hope you enjoyed it I think it looks okay. I know it doesn't match. You know what? This is a basement. <laughs> it's a basement arcade, but who cares? You know what? This is an unfinished basement. I'm not going to lose sleep over this. It's definitely better than the bare concrete, and it's cozy. I need to vacuum this rug and clean it, too. But uh, anyway, all right, guys, that's it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. I will see you next time. I need to be in front of the camera when I say this. I'll see you guys next time. Later and bye!